In this episode, my friend Barry Dyke and I covered a lot of topics, including Muppets, Stockholm Syndrome, and getting back to basics financially. We had fun doing so, and I hope you enjoy listening. Thank you. Welcome to the Bank with Life podcast. I'm your host, James Nether, and I have my dear friend Barry Dyke on with me today. And listen, you know, we, we, we go back several years a long way we're friends and and we see each other you know quasi regularly throughout the year and when we do we always catch up so i'm I'm doing an introduction here but we've been talking for about five or ten minutes and and it's just too good not to capture this for the listener so uh you know it's kind of a mid-conversation we're inviting you to listen if you choose so my friend barry doc he's an author uh three books um uh, the Pirates of Manhattan 1 and 2, Guaranteed Income. Three, he's working on his Magnus Opus, his uh, Ulysses book number four. And I hope he gets it to share, you know, the progress and kind of uh, his work there uh, in this conversation. And, you know, he's just a, I mean, he's a researcher among researchers. If you're not familiar with his work, you need to be. You have an opportunity. If you want the truth, documented truth of what's going on in Wall Street and behind the curtains in the financial world, this is the source. Okay, so Barry, I can't do your, you know, your uh, your pedigree justice, but you know, I appreciate you coming on here as always and sharing your time. And thank you very much. Well, well thanks for having me. It's always good to see my friend Jason. And, uh, James, I'm just a white-haired guy from New Hampshire with a computer and who hates bullies, and um, and that's pretty much what's going on today. And uh, uh, it's always good to hear people from the great state of Texas and uh, uh, and, uh, and and to share the truth with as much as I know. I mean, uh, I'm not God, but you know, I I'm passionate about it, as you know. And uh, I just hate seeing people taken advantage of by these bullies from Wall Street. Then I call them the Pirates of Manhattan, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and, and unfortunately, it's going on more than, than ever. And, you know, what we're, we're at today, I think, is worse than the dot-com meltdown in 2007, 2008. So that's just my opinion. But, um, you know, and if you look at, you know, the debt situation, James, it always evolves around debt. It's always about debt. You know, we had $9 trillion in debt in 2009. Now with, with Biden's latest, you know, Give away 1.7 trillion, it's 31 trillion dollars in debt. Anyone who has any common sense at all realizes that this is going to be a problem. So uh, it's always a pleasure to see my friend James. And- I, I appreciate that. So look, we were just talking about maybe different things that we would talk about, you know, in the conversation. But you were you were getting to some numbers, you know. So can you pick that back up? We're- <laughs> so so the numbers, yeah. So the thing, let me see if I can pull up in my iPad here, but the. Um, you know, if you if you look at the numbers, I mean, preservation of principle is more important than ever, James. Okay, whether it be using life insurance or annuities, or whatever. Because if you look at the um, uh, with the Dow was down about eight or nine percent for 2022. Now the year's just closed up. Okay, uh, the S and P 500, which is kind of the be- benchmark of uh, the stock market, is down by 19 percent, and the Nasdaq is down by 30, 33%. I mean, this is insane. Yeah. And so, uh, and when you look at what you need to get in return to get back to normal, and you know, the tech heavy NASDAQ, which, you know, all the FANG stocks, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, NVIDIA, Google, okay, uh, or Tesla, which has lost 70% of the value. What you need just to get back Rates of return are just astronomical. Now, can it happen with the printing of money? Yes, I think it can. But I think with the Fed Reserve, now they're going to stop printing the money to, to tame inflation. They have to. I mean, I'm in New England, okay, right now, where the, the prices of real estate, it's goofy. Yeah. I mean, you pay $900,000 for a home around here, and it still needs a couple hundred grand to be fixed up. It's, 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 so we have stagflation, as you mentioned. But So I think today, more than ever, people need to be prudent and, and, um, and, and, you know, and, and look at the numbers versus listening to the, the dribble from wall street and, and the media. Yeah. I think with, uh, you know, there, I mean, there's a, there's a lot there, but if we just look at interest rates, you know, I was kind of, you know, conveying earlier with you that, um, 
even in the home office of life insurance companies, they have not experienced this, where the the interest rates are rising. I mean, we've been in a in a the lowest interest rate environment ever in recorded history for the last 10, 12, 15 years, right? Now we're coming out of it. Um, and so you would think that, that uh, oh, that's really good. And, and it, it will be good for some, I get it. But, you know, the life insurance companies, they put most of their money in bonds, right? Corporate bonds, government bonds. And then you have that inverse relationship with interest rates and bond values. You know, so they're going to be uh, working overtime managing their portfolios. But it's going to be very stressful for them. You know, so are they going to be able to maintain their dividends? You know, they're going to, you know, increase their dividends. And I say yes, eventually, right? But before that, they're going to raise their loan interest rates because they have to. They um, have to. And and then, you know, uh, the stagflation, the, the, the cost, like real estate all across the country. I don't know where real estate is, you know, quote unquote affordable. I mean, or a or, or, uh, 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 market connected to reality. But their real estate values are crazy here, there, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. James, I saw in my own neighborhood, okay? okay? It was a trailer, okay? For a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> Come on. I mean, this is stupid. But this is what we're seeing, okay? That, or, you know, you know, a two, three-bedroom home with one car, car garage or Eight hundred thousand. It's stupid. Yeah, and then yeah. and then as interest rates rise, you know the the access to that capital, the cost of capital is going to rise. And then what is that going to do? You know, to the real estate market and even in, in across the stock market, right? These companies, these zombie companies, all they all operate off of borrowed money. So yeah. Yeah, and and, and uh, it was Bloomberg, and this is not me, but actually I documented this. Uh, roughly about twenty percent of the companies uh, in the Russell three thousand are uh, are zombies. I mean, they they, they can't make enough money to, to serve the interest in their debt. Yeah. You know, we're talking you know some pretty big companies like American Airlines or Carnival Cruise Lines and stuff like this, where they they don't make enough money just to, to cover their debt. So, I think um, it's the more I know, the more I think it's back to the fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, of, of, of finance, in other words, you know, say before you invest, of course, but now with Wall Street and, and the asset managers, it's just put it all in the market and throw caution to the wind and it's going to go up. Well, guess what? It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. Win. And, you know, and because I get this all the time when the market always goes up. Well, I just tell people, and don't take my word for it, but look at, let's look at Japan. Okay, now the the uh, the Japanese the two twenty five, which is Nikkei two twenty five, which is kind of the barometer of the Japanese stock market, like our S and P five hundred, but it's Nikkei two uh, twenty five. So uh, in, in nineteen eighty nine, uh, James, uh, to December of eighty nine, it was worth. I think the index was roughly around thirty six thousand. Now it went down in um, around two thousand nine, around seven thousand, like when we had our correction. Okay. But then when you had the massive money printing beginning in 2012, really it kind of took off. The, 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 the Nikkei 225 went up as well. But guess what it closed out last week, James? I don't 26, know. 26,000, okay? Oh, I'm shocked. So 33 yeah. years. 33 years. Yeah. The Japanese market went nowhere. Talk about a zombie so, market. Okay, you remember that anyone, anyone says the market always goes up. Well, it doesn't always go up. Right. No, no. I was just got off the phone with a good friend of mine who's an actuary. He said, "Well, this is manipulation." But see, the point is, is that the Nikkei did not go up; it went backwards over thirty-three years. So I think, and it, uh, it's more and more important that we we help people, you know, save versus you know, and, and, and versus invest. Now I'm all for I'm a capitalist, okay, but but we've gotten so far away from. Um, the, the purpose of retirement income. Um, it's like, um, would you agree, James, that the, the most important thing in a retirement plan is to reduce retirement income? Would you agree? Is what? The most important thing is what? What? Reduce retirement income. Yeah, retirement income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Predictable, stable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We know that. Yeah. That's, that's you and I, we know that we, we're starting in the business. Okay. That's the most important thing. Yeah. But now we've just turned into into a casino. Yeah, you know, with target date funds, and now they're throwing in private equity as of June of 2020. 
and then Biden just stuffed in his ESG oh. 401k plans. Thanks. Yeah. Well, let me ask so, you a question, Barry, because uh, I ask this quite often. Okay. Would you say a definition of risk could be the probability of loss? I think this is good. Eh? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So Wall Street says that the longer you have your money exposed to risk, and the younger you are, the more of your capital you should have exposed to risk, the probability of loss, the better off you're going to be. That doesn't even make sense to me. For a I mean, portion, a, yeah. well, for a portion, do you want me? Is this like so? But yeah, I mean, a portion. Yeah, I can see a portion of it. But yeah. you have all your your money on, on the roulette wheel of black or red. Okay, it's stupid. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm stupid. a capitalist. Yeah, I believe this the, is what's going the, on. Yeah, I believe that all of the markets are manipulated, but they're not to be necessarily avoided. You know, a hundred percent. You know, uh, it's like I'm not opposed to the markets. I'm not a pro at all. I mean, I'm a capitalist, and what uh, amount of free markets that we have, I think it should be taken advantage of. No question. So I'm not opposed to the market, right? But if I want to put all of my money, all of my capital, exposed into the market, exposed to risk, and then rely on a predictable, stable income in retirement. I'm like, yeah, I'm out. That, no. Well, with, 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 it, with, with the um, one thing I know we may want to touch on but, uh, about the, re- the recent collapse of FTX, the cryptocurrency thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So this is <laughs> that was always going to go up too, right? And, it, and it's oh, like, no, that's, oh yeah, I mean, alter, yeah. alternate alternative And intellectually, it kind of makes sense. I mean, if there's some global standard, whatever, someone can everything agree on, but no one does. But what appalled me is that how much of um, supposedly sp- smart money went into FTX. This guy, now, no, I think I don't even know if he had. He had I don't even know if he had his finances on, on, on accelerator. Like I don't even know if they had any QuickBooks in there. I guess he had in the back of a notepad, all right? But he raised close to a billion dollars. He had institutional investors like uh, uh, Tama Bravo, private equity firm, Sequoia Capital, okay, SoftBank, these giants, and they didn't do squat, but due diligence. Yeah. Uh, it, it's incredible. And, 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 you know, Forbes and Fortune, he was rated 30 billion. But my point is, is that you and I have a different perspective because, you know, the money we help for people, we, want, we don't want them to lose it. These people are just gambling with other people's money. And it's really gambled uh, with other people's money when you don't have responsibility to preserve it. Yeah. And and then and this is what's happening. And then if, the, if, they, if they blow it up, the system like they did in 2008, then you know, they want us to bail them all out. Sure. So, um, so, so that's, I think it's going to be more, your message is more important than ever. Yeah. Thank you. I, I agree. I, it's like privatizing the profits and then, uh, you know, publicizing, sharing all the losses with the general public, who's always on the hook, right? Same, it's, it's it's like the same playbook, different chapter. You know, different characters, different you know products or commodities or strategies, and but it's the same thing over and over. See, and I hate to be a pessimist, and I'm really not. I mean, I'm an optimist. Um, I think you know, capital should reside in your own hands. You know, yeah. And you should control as much of your own capital as possible, right? Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice having peace of mind when you have a bunch of money in the bank say, hey, I can buy, buy, buy that thing for cash. You know, guess what? I don't have to finance anybody. Yeah. You know, you know it's going to take me a while to, to get that way, but uh, it, it gives you peace of mind and you can act versus react. See, they want everyone to be dependent upon debt. Yeah. You know, and and this is the whole thing. So, so what you and I were kind of, what would Nelson say? We're, we're we're leaving them out of Babylon, maybe, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Should be out of slavery, out yeah, of debt slavery, you know, and, and, and debt is the new slavery. That's right. And and the whole thing is is that um, uh, and 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 this is how they're doing all this. This one point seven trillion dollar budget, which is insane. <laughs> 
crazy. Totally insane. And, and you know, so and sneaking all this stuff in, and it was like a 4,000 page document or whatever, and they gave people 36 hours to read it. Who writes those bills, Mary? Lobbyists. Yeah. Is it you know? I know I know the Rand Corporation and some of these big, but I mean, really, who? How, how do you even find out who writes those bills, or can you even find out who? I'm talking about who really actually writes those bad boys. You know, the lobbyists, the lawyers, the lawyers, the lobbyists. You know, okay. You know, and and um, so, uh, any anyway, so all we can do is just help people insulate people so much from this this, this, this sh- these shenanigans okay yeah well look before you know before i did the introduction we were uh talking about different topics that we might talk about and uh we talked about if you don't mind um you know a concept that you kind of were excited about you shared with doug um can you get into that because you've seen this you see this and i see it too so okay uh, so yes yeah, so essentially because i've been working on this book and it, it's it's hard i mean it's just a uh, and you've written books, whatever it's, and this is, this is the hardest one I've done uh, a long time, but because I have my own practice that, um, um, you know, I tell people I feel, I feel more than I, you know, I win, you know, we, we you know, we think as advisors, we win them all, we don't, but any event. But one of the things which, which kind of surprised me when I have people come into my offices and they'll, they've had portfolios, sometimes sizable portfolios, a million, a couple million bucks, whatever. And they'll be taking a hit, you know, a couple of hit, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollar hit, and they're in the sixty, late sixties, and they want to retire, and they're like, they're like deer in the headlights, like, no, I'm going to stay in the market. I'm like, hello, I mean, if you know, if you watch the movie which I'm in and about, but if you look at the mathematical probabilities of the money coming back, it's 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 virtually zero. Okay, but yeah. but I call it the Stockholm syndrome. And, and which is the Stockholm syndrome was started and we came about in 1973 when there was a, a there was a bank robbers in, in Sweden and and they held a whole bunch of hostages with them and that, and after they the uh, they held the hostages out like 30 days something like that and they were finally released the hostages refused to testify against the bank robbers as a matter of fact some of the hostages actually raised money with the bank robbers so. If you look at our um, uh, institutions, kind of like the bank robbers, okay, and if you look at look at the retail investors, the hostages, that's what's happening. So a lot of people they're they're failing to act, in their, in, 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 which is not, not their best interest. So you think about it, like in the state of Texas, where has you have great asset protection. Uh, Texas is one of the best states in the country. I know that. Okay, I wish that, I'm in New Hampshire, so I wish it was better, but. So if you look at the, the, the asset protection of the state of uh, Texas, where you know 100% of protection of uh, claims of creditors from life insurance annuities, okay, which is freaking awesome. Okay? 100, 100%. 100 percent okay? yeah. Not too many states that have that, right? Right. Okay. So you know that, and I know that. So if something happens and, and people go bankrupt and get sued, we know that. I've been in business. It still happens. So people are saying, well, wait a second, I put my money in here, I put this money in this dumb light policy, this dumb annuity, I get a, I have a contractual guarantee, which is a contractual guarantee, or I think I can, I can, I'll throw my money in the market, let Wall Street gamble with it, uh, potentially lose it all, and if, and if I get sued or go back, I could lose it. So I think I'm going to do that. And, th- th- and so, and th- th- this is what we're seeing. It's clear as day. And, and this is kind of, I shared with Doug, I said, this, I said, said the retail investors are suffering from Stockholm syndrome. Does that make sense, James? Absolutely. Absolutely. A couple of years ago, or, you know, sometime back, I, uh, you know, the middle aged Caucasian woman um, persona that they make fun of is uh, Karen. You know, don't yeah. be a Karen. Um, you know, about a year and a half or two years ago or so, I mean, I talked about it. It's like, because I experienced what, the same thing. The, it's almost like a financial Stockholm syndrome. So I call them Stockholm syndies. You know, no, <laughs> this is, no, it, this is where everybody else is putting their money. It's in the market, whatever it is, you know, and 
these big corporations, household names would never lead me down the wrong path. Everybody's doing it. The whole narrative in the financial world is put your money, invest, you know, in the stock market. And there's an absolute difference between savings and investing, no question. Um, and, they, and they just can't sometimes see the value of a liquid capital that only goes one way ein bein strasse one now it may look slow as molasses at first glance um but over time you're shocked at how much money accumulates in these guaranteed contracts like life insurance right um so yes it makes absolute sense to me barry and i'm glad you're going to write about it okay yeah it, it, it just occurred to me because i've been struggling with it and i'm saying oh my god why because I, I asked Doug about it, and then I asked you about it. And we all, you know, it, it's 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 really it's very logical, you know. And 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 the thing is, it's, it's actuarially sound, it's mathematically sound. And the research, which I know, James, you know, well, I give you the great example, and this is going to be in the book as well. You ever heard of a company? Uh, and this is why annuities are kind of the gold standard uh, for retirement plans. Yeah. You ever heard of a company called Newmont, uh, uh, Newmont Corporation? Newmont. No, no, I can't say I have. Okay. Well, well it, I, I, go, I figure what the ticker is on, on the, uh, but anyway, is, it, is it a mining like, company? Yeah. It's, it's actually, it's, uh, it's based out of, um, Colorado. Okay. It's, I think it's, 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 it's headquartered. In, anyhow, Newmont Corporation it's an acronym for which used to be part of uh, uh, New York and Mont in Montana. So that's at New Mont. Okay. Okay. It started in the 1920s. It's the largest gold producer okay. in the world. Okay. Okay. It's a fact. So people don't believe me. Google it. Okay. Go to Yahoo. Go to New Mont. Okay. And New Mont is the largest gold producer in the world. You know, precious metals, silver, uranium, that type of thing. This is this is is a fact. And the but the majority of the shares of New Bond Corporation are owned by mutual fund companies who gamble with our money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. BlackRock, Vanguard, whatever. People just go to Yahoo. Okay. Well, you know what New Bond did last fall? Wait, they did a pension risk transfer. How'd you guess, James? Because they're all doing it. They can't they can't guarantee their pensions. Okay. They can't guarantee so, so they so they so they disclose, they have to disclose in the 10K or the 10Q. Okay, they disclose, they don't have to disclose who the insurance company is, but okay. they disclose that they spent 427 million, repeat, Newmont Corporation spent 427 million on annuities to finance their pension plan for the, uh, for their, uh, for their, uh, the uh, participants and their beneficiaries. So the gold standard, the largest gold company in the world, Bought an annuity to finance his pension plan. Yeah, I think about that. You know, it's uh, it was a it's been a big business. You know, the pension risk transfer of these big corporations, and you know much more than I. The corporations that have done this because they're all massive. Just about every household name that you know, the listener, right? Uh, those corporations have transferred the risk of their pensions to all their pensioners and their beneficiaries to life insurance companies wonder why they're so they're buying annuities and wall street's telling you for your retirement yeah. put it all in the red yeah keep going put it on the royal real yeah. yeah keep gambling keep gambling because the more and more and more they trade okay the more money they make yeah but you ever hear a little company called ibm james I'll be him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll be moved. You know, a little company armor. Okay. <laughs> you know what they did, James? In, in, in uh, September of 2022? No. Tell us. They bought two annuities for $16 billion, with a B. Repeat that. They $16, bought two, 16 billion. They bought $16 billion worth of annuities for 100,000 uh, planned participants and their beneficiaries. My make gosh. This Man, we're talking about government numbers now. Now, there, there surely – is there one life insurance company? They surely – one life insurance company didn't take all that risk. No, no. They actually they split it up. And, you know, it's actually it – was, it was busted up into two, which is smart. Yeah, um, to do. But 
But my point is, is that, and, and I wouldn't necessarily, for an individual, I wouldn't naturally recommend the people who who who, uh, who underwrote this uh, IBM risk up for them. It was a personal <laughs> client. I wouldn't do it. I, I, I wouldn't have the same thing. Okay. But um, IBM didn't yeah, want to retain the risk. Yeah. Right. So, so I wouldn't recommend these companies because I know how much the reinsurance, some, some of the shenanigans goes behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, so being, uh, being ultra conservative, I would, well, I would not recommend the same companies, but my point is that this is, you know, one of the largest computer companies in the world. And actually, uh, Hewlett Packard, uh, did the same thing in, uh, the fall of, uh, of, uh 2021. They bought one for 5.7 billion. So you have the large, one of the largest technology companies in the world, HP. And one of the largest uh, uh, computer companies in the world, uh, IBM, both bought annuities. But do you think you hear that on the mainstream media? No, not at all, not at all. Wonder why that is. Well, they don't want to bite the hand that the feeds them. Because, hey, you know, exactly. Jay, yeah. You know, well, you, well, but you know, you're going to love James. So, did I ever tell you about the stuff on the on the media companies? Um, uh, no. You know, so I can't believe you've been holding that on me, Barry. Come on, let it. Don't keep it from us. <laughs> um, you ever heard a little company, a little media company called the BBC? Yep. Mm-hmm. You ever heard a little media company called the New York Times, the Gray Lady? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever heard a little um, uh, a company called Columbia Broadcasting Systems or CBS? Yeah, these little companies. Yeah, that you're mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> you know the uh, blog James? No way. They all bought annuities. Really? I, I'm just yeah, not that, shocked. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole, this is, so this is all verifiable. Obviously, I wouldn't say any of this stuff unless I could verify with public knowledge. And luckily, I you know some good friends like yourself and uh, some good actual friends who actually read these annual reports. And they'll, they'll say, oh, here's another one, Barry, whatever. And, uh, and so I've been digging on that stuff and it's just been work. But yeah, so the BBC, they, they bought... There's three types, and I won't get into it now, but they do a buyout, which essentially buy out the entire pension uh, risk, okay? Sometimes they'll do a buy-in, which is essentially they'll segregate. In other words, sometimes you'll have a union and a non-union plan. So sometimes they'll just they'll buy out, they say, the salary plan, which is called a buy-in. They you know, they carve it out because the other is, is – and that's what's called a buy-in. Or thirdly, they do what's called a longevity swap, which essentially mm-hmm. they're going to an insurance company to, to – um, ensured the long tail uh, uh, longevity of, of the, uh, the population. So it's like a reinsurance, in. yeah, yeah. So it's it's all so, but that so that's what the BBC did. But it was for five billion, five, you know, five point two billion. So again, you know, it's, again, for, this is all you now. So hopefully, we you know I'll get this thing done. But the uh, so not to. Not that it's the insurance company are the, are the panacea, but this is what these major corporations are doing. Um, uh, we're uh, the uh, you know it's just the uh, you know it's uh, but this is you know so we so people need to be really protect more than what they ever have. And uh, sorry, I just have to. I get someone's texting me, but uh, you're a busy man. I'm, I'm like your phone rings and you get texts all day and emails. I don't even know how you answer all your emails. I don't know how you do it. So, um, so, so, so th- these are the good things. So this will be in, in the next book. But uh, so I, I think now more than ever, people need to really get back to the, the fundamentals. Just like you've been playing sports, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, you know, if you want to be a good athlete, you got to, you got to exercise and you got to eat right and I'll do all that stuff first. And then, you know, your game improves. It's like in finances, it's the same thing. You got to, you got to save and you got to, you know, watch your budgets and all that stuff and save before you invest. But the way Wall Street and the media wants, they want you to put up, throw it all in the casino and trust us. Sure. Yep. And, and, and they make money and, while and it's the there. They make money shorting it while they collapse it. They make money in the in the legal system and the reorganization and then the re-monetize. And, I mean, it's just a vicious cycle and they're all profitable. Everyone, yeah, but you. it's like W.C. Fields. You remember him? It's like, well, the broker made money and the firm made money, and two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> you know, you're always the third one. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, you know, the uh, the British. I don't know if you ever heard this expression before, but I, I hate to use this word, but it, it's 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 perfect. 
You know what they you know what they call the retail investor, the dumb institutional investor? They call them Muppets. No. No. So yeah, so people are becoming Muppets. Oh my gosh. Are these people on Wall Street that call us Muppets? Well, that's what they call the city of London, which is uh, you know, London. Their, okay, sure. Okay, which is their Wall Street, which is a huge financial. So they call the retail investor institutional debt, you know, Muppets, which is very derogatory, but I, you know, it's kind of in line with our Stockholm syndrome theory. Yeah. My theory. And how know. did how did you find something like that out? I mean, you just get to the inside and I mean Well, you have to, you know, you have to that, this is the blessing of the internet. You have to look at other systems around the world, you know, where I'm, I'm trying to tell people how to save safely. You have to look at other systems around the world. Um, and you have to look for press outside this country because the, the press now, James, is much better 20, 30 years ago than it is now. And right now, so much of it is, is so filtered and it's so uh, pro uh, uh, Wall Street that it, it's, it's very difficult. But if you, go, if you subscribe to other papers outside the, uh, the U.S., which I do, the Times, the, the Guardian, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, their their uh, their reporting is far superior uh, to the Journal and even Bloomberg and stuff like that. I subscribe to all of them, okay. But um, but what I notice is that the, the Brits, France, some they seem to be more fierce journalists than the, the U.S. is. So there's, there's a there's a big uh, and also it's a lot more open. Um, and so, so some of the, like, I subscribe to some of the, uh, the British, um, uh, risk transfer companies, whatever, and they're very open about some of the stuff, but yeah. around here, you can't get any information on anybody. So, uh, but, uh, so it's just, it's just, you know, it's just, um, and, but then I actually, I actually contacted like foreign governments. Um, so, uh, I'm actually, and, uh, actually, uh, contacted the Dutch, uh, governments because, you know, um, that, in the Netherlands, you're required to buy an annuity. You know, they have defined contributions like our 401k, the board three days. They have them. And they're all pretty much the same, James, as you know, the same in Canada, our RSVPs or right. pubs. They're all kind of the same. All right. But um, in order to, to, uh, to protect themselves, uh, or, in other words, you're required to purchase an annuity in the UK. I'm not in the UK, excuse me, in the Netherlands. Netherlands. So I said, I got to verify this. So I wrote to them and the whole thing. And I was sure enough it was being there. But the, 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 uh, the, the Dutch government, right? oh, yeah, you have to do it, do it this way. Wow. Who who guarantees those annuities? I mean, are they insurance companies oh, in the insurance Netherlands? Companies. Yeah. It's insurance companies. Well, my, my, yeah, of course. Believe me, I don't want to have government control, but I'm saying when you, retirement income is supposed to reduce retirement income. Yeah. End of story. I don't care. I'll, I'll just I'll debate that with anybody. But what we're having today is that oh, invest it for the market. Oh, the market always goes up. Well, it doesn't always go up. Put in alternative investments. Alternative investments, cryptos, <laughs> private equity, hedge funds, distressed it. What are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> or ESG. I mean, so anyway, so it's so a lot of this stuff is so purpose retirement uh, plan is really. Um, it, it's, it's, it's to produce retirement income. And because most people don't have any pensions anymore, we got to be, we have to be more structural and, and helpful to people. Sure. Well, can I, and you don't have to answer, do you buy annuities and life insurance, Barry? Maybe I shouldn't ask that. All right. So I do too. I mean, that's where, you know, that's what I do. Um, you know, but I have all this stuff as well. So I'm mean, just, uh, sure, yeah. You know, hey, I, look, it was a, a, a major milestone in my life. You know, I know I don't look it, right? But, um, you know, so my birthday is June 12th, okay? So December 12th, I turned 59 and a half. So now I can go and, you know, take, uh, you know, distributions from qualified plans without being penalized. Um, you know, and I'm just thinking it was uh, – I don't want to say it was emotional, but it was a it was a change for me. You know, in my career, I've done this a long time, and I've always had and still have you know older clients, but I have younger clients too. But you know, always talking about fifty nine and a half and retirement, and then here I am knocking on the door, and I'm like, oh my gosh, um, I can actually go avoid the penalty. You know, it was a. It was almost like turning 40, you know, or turning 30 when you're a young person, you know, it's like, oh, you're not old until you're 30. And then you turn 30, it's like, no, I'm, 
I'm I'm King Kong. Then you turn forty, and it's like, no, I'm still I'm still good. Then fifty, and oh, I'm halfway through life now. You know, it's just another milestone. I'm saying, and uh, that was just an eye opener. But I want to be like my mentor who graduated at eighty eight. You know, and he said the last 20, 25 years of his life was the most productive and fun. So I'm patterned myself after him. So it's, me as well. You know, he was, you know, he was a God bless and Nelson. He was such a, you know, he was just a well, wonderful influence in my life. And and luckily, because writing the books, I've got, you know, meet guys like you and, and Nelson and Bob Castellone. And, and then, you know, in that movie, I'm in mean, that boom, baby boom dilemma. Did you ever see that? Yeah. No, you sent it to me. Thank you very much. But I, you know, I must confess yeah, I had not watched busy, it. But, but, you know, so, you know, in any event, so I'm in this, with some of the top economists in the, in the country, Robert uh, Merton and uh, 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 Bill Sharp, William Sharp, the book, and a little prize. A sharp ratio, Sharp? Yeah, it's the Sharp ratio. Oh, wow. He's got Bill Sharp, in the, in the, I'm in the movie with him, and they're about using annuities for um, uh, uh, retirement plans. So and uh, and then the blessing of the book is that I got to know Jack Bogle before he died, and oh, okay. I shared my books that I told him. And he thought it was really great what I was doing. So uh, um, Vanguard, and um, yeah. and then there was another guy, a uh, guy by the name of Jeremy Gold, who was an actuary, mm. uh, who I get to meet, and um, he was one of the first actuaries to work on Wall Street. Uh, and he, and he um, uh, it, it, again, I got referred to him by a friend of mine who was an actuary, and we talked and. Um, he was uh, very upset with the actuarial profession, and uh, but he was one of the first guys to show how corporations could invade pension plans to, to do uh, to fund, to finance leverage bias. And um, um, so I taught him about my research, and you know, so anyways, I had great encouragement from people. Um, but it, you know, very, it, it hasn't been easy. Yeah, well, if I'd have, if I'd have been in the movie, I surely would have watched it by now. But I, I will watch it. So tell us about your. Uh, your fourth book and i'm glad that you're writing a complete different work okay because i know it's uh a labor of love and it's a real labor and it's time consuming and taxing and um but i i'm i'm excited for it and i'm glad that you're doing it and i can't wait to read it i will read that for sure um so tell us about that fourth book what what the timeline where you at and i mean we won't hold you down you know to any hard dates but just update us on well, Progress. you know, the whole thing is, is that I wanted to have it uh, uh, finished by the the uh, the, uh, the with the anniversary of the collapse of executive life of twenty uh, the twenty year collapse, which was last uh, October. So the collapse of the executive it was actually I wanted to do it coincide with the investigation because the executive life, which is the largest life company ever, collapsed uh, collapsed in eighty nine and went bankrupt in ninety. And then, but there was a rated, a rated company, yeah. a rated company, but the same crap, you know, you know, it was, it was all, it was stuff with junk bonds. Michael and Milken, the, that, oh, the junk bond yeah. king, that's where he was selling yeah, them. Michael Milken. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I mean, and, uh, and uh, it was just incredible shenanigans. So I want to have a finish by that time because it involved credit Suisse and uh, not credit Suisse, but um, I'm going to get a uh, suit here, but it, uh, Credit Lyonnais, a French bank, when it was totally illegal for them to purchase the portfolio because uh, it was prior to the, uh, uh, the uh, repeal of Glass-Siegel Act. Totally illegal. Totally, everything that they did, was, it was illegal in the state of California. It was legal uh, in the Glass-Siegel, but it went ahead anyhow. Um, the, the bond portfolio was sold uh, from uh, Executive Life to uh, Credit Lyonnais. Uh, again, illegal. Uh, didn't really, nothing came... Uh, about until 1998, seven or eight years after the, the collapse of Sawa, from a whistleblower, which I still think is unnamed to this day, there wasn't an investigation by the Senate until 2002, 11 years, 11, 12 years after the collapse of the executive life. And then after that, in 2003, there was a fine by um, two credible ENAs for about $770 million. Ooh. This is this, this is real money back then. So, um, but, and, yeah, but so, they, they had all that time to, you know, take their profits and churn them up and, you know, gin up that amount to pay the fine, you know? And, and, yeah. So that's what I wanted to, but that's not going to happen. But anyway, even so, so wait, wait, I mean, so, so it's not going to happen. Is that what I'm hearing? You're not, it's not going to be done by October of this year. 
Uh, hopefully it'll be done by October. I'm sick of looking at it, you know. But it's just, <laughs> but it's, it's just it's it's the rewrites, you know, and, and it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, and verifying everything, and you have to verify, you know, because I don't get sued. Um, and um, and uh, but yeah, I, I hopefully it will be done this year. Okay. Um, but but then what I, I'd also been following um, uh, James the uh, the cryptocurrencies. This is crazy. You know, and Charlie Munger from, uh, you know, Warren Buffett's partner, the yeah. billionaire guy who I thought was a very bright guy. He called cryptocurrencies back in 2013. He called, he called it rat poison. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was kind of that opinion. And, you know, intellectually, I said, it, it, it makes sense. A digital currency, there's some uniform standard. And I guess they're going to come up with some federal reserve cryptocurrency, whatever. But it, to me, it's more of manipulation. And, um, yeah, absolutely. So it, that, that's what it is. So. I, but so you have all these crazy things. Then you had the FTX, and then I had they started going bankrupt, and then uh, uh, so it was just a house of cards. So I had to include that, and then I had to include private equity uh, influence in, 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 in the uh, life business, which is sad, but it's it's true. Um, then your other uh, crazy stuff like the payment for order flow, which is essentially front running the market, which is companies like uh, Robinhood exist off of. And then I wanted to uh, include another bubble, which would be the uh, all the the the, the latest bubble. Another bubble was the the autonomous uh, self driving cars, which is crazy. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, hundred hundred billion over hundred billion was put into this crap. Mm-hmm. And then we have the stacks, which are the special purpose acquisition companies. And so it's bubbles, you know. It's it's like a, a it's like a. Uh, a bouquet of bubbles, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. well, I mean so we had some prime, you know, back in the 2008. Now we got we got cryptos, we got SPACs, we got uh, private equity, we got uh, then the stock buybacks. Yeah, game. Yep. Roughly fifty percent of the stock buybacks. Uh, roughly fifty percent of all the trading in Wall Street is done by because of stock buybacks. So if you took out the stock buybacks, which were illegal since 1982, by the way, um, if you took the stock back by buybacks out of the market, the market only go up about three percent. Man, that's why so, we, you know we need we need to be privy to all this information, documented, Barry. So, I'm telling yeah, you, so researcher it, among researchers, right here. So. Yeah, so so a lot of things. So it's just uh, so it's 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 a, it's a lot of work to be done. But uh, the good thing is. Uh, uh, the, which, which, which you're teaching your clients and your friends and uh, family, and uh, that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I'm just trying to expose them uh, to the idea that you know they can become their own banker and they can control their capital. And if they do, because the banking function exists, banking is um, it exists and and it's profitable, right? And so if you don't control the banking function as it relates to you and your life. You're going to abdicate your responsibility to someone else who will perform the banking function and they will be profitable. Um, So thank you for that. Let me say on executive life, I didn't realize this and it was last year, right? Uh, that and most people I think are unaware of like the uh, guarantee association system. You know, like <laughs> life insurance companies can't go bankrupt, but they're managed or, or ran by the state, governed by the state. You know, then you have the overarching federal. You know, Big Brother. But the bottom line is, your state's broke, my state's broke, and so the state doesn't really come in there and guarantee. You know, if a, if a life insurance company becomes insolvent, which they determine, right, if they're insolvent, and then there's relatively, there's only two choices. You're either going to, uh, they're going to give them a, a certain amount of time to uh, bring their finances up to date, um, or they're going to liquidate them, right, or they're going to rehabilitate them, right, if the company doesn't do that. So, um, and my point here is when they get liquidated, Right. So there's a primary guarantee of all life insurance companies backed up by the claims paying ability of the insurance company. A secondary guarantee, and this is not a reason to purchase life insurance. I'm just explaining, have a conversation with my friend that uh, the secondary guarantees are through these gar- these guarantee associations yeah. that are that are the state. There's their their state agencies. So but if your state's broken, my state's broke, where are they going to get the money? And I get they have the power to tax. 
they offset that loss to every other legal reserve life insurance company doing business in that state. Okay. That's the background for this is what I discovered last year. I was informed by a very high officer in a very large life insurance company in North America that last year, 2022, they made their final payment in the executive life debacle. Yeah. Because they did business in California, executive life was liquidated, went into receivership, was liquidated, the Guarantee Association came in, and all of the other life insurance companies had to make all of those policyholders whole. Um, and, and, you know, and this was just in conversation. We were, you know, it was a, a, in a meeting, you know, a business meeting, and, you know, we're having this conversation, and and they just explained that how they were excited to make their final payment on the executive life collapse. It's like, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, and it was uh, how many years? So, that's so, so when they shut down in 1990, so this is 23 years ago, James. 22 uh, no, years no, no, 2000 was 23 years ago, 1990 is 33 years ago, and 89 is yeah, 34. It's incredible. And, and you know, and thank you. And, and some people have been very supportive of my research, James, but even yeah. NOLGA, okay, the National Association, uh, yeah. They were they were not very uh, interested in my re- me poking around my nose around, but I actually they, it's a, a non for profit. So I, I actually love a lot of information on the website, which is public domain, uh, which which actually documents the uh, uh, the, the law. Fee- uh, not the uh, the uh, the money that um, they had to pay out on executive life. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh! It's in the billions. Yeah, and and then and look, where does the life insurance companies get their money? Right from the stockholders, or if they're mutual companies, uh, from the policyholders. So at the end of the day, it's another form of you and I paid for that. Yeah. So yeah. So the whole thing is that. So you know. So let let, let it be known that you know if people are going to be using now the irony of the whole thing, James, is that the people are going to be better off. With a life insurance company, whether it's owned by a stock company or mutual company, or even private equity, God forbid. But um, structurally, they're going to be safer under a uh, a life contract. The thing is, that if you really want to be the have the best, though, you really want to you want to have either use mutuals or fraternals, or you know some Absolutely. some of the well managed stock companies. Absolutely, I, I, I got I got it. I cringed a little when you said even with the uh, hedge funds buying the life insurance to the stock company, which is true because of the secondary guarantees. Because all of the other companies have to go in there if something happened to these, you know, these hedge because the hedge funds, in my opinion, they're buying these stock companies with the skinny little reserves and then leveraging the fire out of them. But yeah, what could go wrong there? If something did go wrong, all of the other life insurance companies have to come in and make the secondary. They actually fulfill the secondary guarantees. So, but I agree with you. So they would be better off. But then there's a pecking order maybe you're out of life insurance companies and i'm like if you have the opportunity my opinion you know it's a well-run mutual company is i don't know how you can beat that personally you yeah, know and, and uh you know and so the funny thing is is that you know and i've talked to some experts at some of the stuff and um then they agree but a lot of people they just uh, they just buy the rate of return and all this and the highest oh, interest rate stupid yeah, yeah. Which is, that's like you know, uh, I don't know. I don't make a, a good comparison. That's but it's just like uh, that's like buying a Ferrari without brakes. You know, it's just uh, that's what they <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> driving on the autobahn. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so this is you know, so this is what they're selling. You know, and it's like, and uh, so and you know, so as 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 this come things come down, I think people are going to be more. They have to be more proactive looking out for themselves. I agree. Because the media's not going to do it. The government's not going to do it. I mean, Biden's not going to do it. I mean, he's not, you know, all the, you know, the, uh, uh, it's, it's stuff with all the private equity and Wall Street people. So, I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just same old, same old. But so people, they really need you as independent voice, James. I agree. They need you too. You know, it's like, that's, you know, you're a busy man, but you're still available for, you know, uh, Prospective clients, you know, so y'all. Yeah, I, I still do. I, I down, track him down. Yeah, you know, I still love doing the work. You know, it's it's, it's fun because you can make a uh, you can make a difference in people's lives, and um, you know, you know, all I can say, you know, so you help you, the, your friends the, and the people you know. You get to become you know clients, so get to love them, so you look out for them, 
Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, so it's fun. And then, you know, I can have, you know, you know, I have a good living, you know, I'll never be a Wall Street, but I don't, you know, I don't, that's not my motivator. Um, you know, I just, uh, the truth is more important to me. No question. No question. I agree. All right. So we've been going a while. I didn't set a timer, so I know it's over 30, 40 minutes. Um, do you have anything in closing you want to share, Barry? So this year is the only commitment that we have for your book this year, twenty twenty three. Yeah. So yeah. So let I me mean, let's see what else is going on. Yeah. So I I think this now, now more than ever people need to you know you know to uh, return to the basics and uh, uh, you know I, the more I know the more I don't know um, uh, the more the craziness of this whole uh, you know uh, you know look out for all these bubbles which we're seeing. You know, autonomous vehicles, I everything. Mean, um, you know, which is silly. I mean, you know, you know I didn't written and realized, James, look, you know, all these self driving cars, they can't turn left. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Spend a hundred billion dollars and they can't go left, you know what I mean? And so there's a lot of things which, you know, and they can't, you know, they can't tell if a dog is or, or a child, whatever. It, so a lot of, we're, we're a long way off from that stuff, okay? Yeah. Maybe someday will it happen? Probably. In our lifetimes, I don't know. Um, but it's just, so we're just going from one bubble to another, you know, so this and the whole, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, and, 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 and I guess maybe we're going to advise more so, I mean, all this, this stuff that Robin Hood brought out and the people, um, and, and they didn't realize that Robin Hood was making all their money by essentially by front running their other client book through payments with order flow. Right. Um, what a oh. novel new idea. What a new idea. <laughs> Run ready. <laughs> Run ready. You know? Yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. And, and so, yeah, and so and then the buybacks, too. I mean, some of the stuff is, it's you know, it's going back to 1982 where, uh, it, you know, stock buybacks are, you know, illegal in a lot of other countries. Um, payment for order flow is illegal in the um, in, uh, UK and uh uh, you know, and frowned on it, but you know, it's, it's, um, but in the U S it kind of anything goes. And so people need to understand that the, the uh, they need to look out what's best for themselves. Unfortunately, so much of the narratives coming out of the wall street and the narr in the media are, which are uh, beneficial for the banks. Yep. Banks so don't when, ask me. when you say, get, right. Yeah. When you say you get back to the basics, would you like saving, uh, priority over maybe investing or saving first and then like guarantees or liquidity or what you know what else would you equate to fundamentals you know um, yeah you know you know do what you love too i mean just you know mm -hmm. people need, you know, need to have a career i mean that's the best thought going to be in yourself james it's absolutely uh, any financial product so i mean some people they they have some passion some god-given passion which they should focus in on i mean which is whether it be you know or, a music teacher or a carpenter or an attorney or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, and um, also to just also be, have people be more proactive. I guess which uh, for your listeners, I'm saying be more proactive, James. Um, what I'm seeing now, which is really, I think it's uh, um, when you're doing transfers out of uh, the market now. Um, uh, and if you're see we're seeing it, and, I've, and Doug's seen it, and I've probably seen it as well, is that, a routine uh, liquidation out of the market now, which should take four to five business days on the Investment Advisor Act of 1940. Yeah. Okay, I'm not making this up, folks. Google if you don't believe me. Should take roughly four to five days. Yeah. Now, James, we're seeing that it's taking two months, yeah. three months sometimes. The paperwork is never in good order. So they're, so what they're doing is that uh, uh, they're trying to hold on to people's assets more. So I'm saying people stop this, you know, don't, you know, don't relinquish your 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 um, your, your your buying power to Wall Street because this is what they're doing. And you know what I saw, in James, on a major Fortune fifty company. Or yes, yeah, fifty probably it's a Fortune. It is a Fortune fifty company. They put in a fifty percent limitation on, uh, on withdrawals at the fifty nine and a half. Wow, to me it's, it's criminal. Wow. So you so you, they, 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 by changing the plan documents by lawyering it up. So now people are, uh, you know, uh, they can't get the money out. Um, another uh, thing which they're doing now is they're, uh, um, they're, uh, you're seeing, uh, not, you need to have, uh, 
signature guarantees, bank yep. medallion guarantees, yep. all these things. Okay, affidavits. Uh, of, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So we've seen all that. So so I'll be telling people, please, please, please look out for yourself because these guys are. And and actually, uh, and if I, I get a document is that the uh, uh, Cliff, not Cliffwater, but um, uh, Pimco and um, a couple of other asset managers actually. I think about thirty percent of all these uh, 401k plans now are trying to uh, create asset, uh, keep the money within the plan. So instead of people being prudent, you know, if you're over fifty nine and a half, buy an annuity or part of it at least, okay, which they should be doing, okay. Um, they're they're really tr- they're trying to help people um, stay within the plan, and then you know they want people because they want them to deal with this asset institution, and you know I'll do respect to twenty six year olds. I mean so. Um, these people being referred to 26 year olds in, in the plan who don't never seen a bear market. And, um, so I think, I, I think what I think call action is really for people to be more proactive, look out for themselves. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that. Be more proactive, be aware, be educated, right? Make educated decisions, work with educated agents, advisors. Yeah. You know, one thing I've seen too. Um, some of these large equity companies and equity managers, um, you know, if somebody wanted to even like partially transfer or liquidate, they're like, oh, well, you know, and you never seen this five or 10 years ago. I didn't. They're like, you well, it's right. like, well, we could put it in cash. You know, we could put that much in cash for a while. It's like, okay, we won't even charge any fees. Oh, thank you for not charging fees on cash. Um, you know, just everything. And then, of course, you know, the paperwork's not in good order. Need a signature guarantee and medallions, you know, stamp or um, even moving money between life insurance companies. I've seen, oh, now I got to have an affidavit of a loss policy or I've got to have an affidavit of this. And I, you've never seen this. And these marginal companies are doing everything that they can do to to hold the, the money. Yeah. And it's and like they act like it's their money. Them. Yes. Yeah, and this is, you know, it's like, sorry, but I didn't, you, you know, can't find any of this stuff. But I, now that I, I, this happened yesterday, we saw a client being charged $75, uh, $100 just to leave. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Your money's in cash and they're charging me to go up and leave the door? Yeah. But this is so what I'm saying. It, it's, it's probably going to get worse. So what I'm saying is be proactive for, for your people now. And, and um you know, and uh, again, it's I'm not against equities or anything like that, but it's just, it, but this is, this is, this is wrong. These guys are being bullies. I don't like bullies. Yeah. And so, um, and, and, and there, you know, and then when I see the further the pollution of the 401ks with the private equity, which the Department of Labor opened the door in, in 2020. And then, um, and then also the, uh, when the inclusion of ES and G formulas into, into 401ks with Biden push through. I mean, you're in the te- Texas. I mean, uh, I mean, ES and G was, it's, uh, but anyway, so I, I address that too. Not, hey, I don't want any pollution. I don't think anyone wants any pollution. I don't want any pollution. Right. Uh, you know, we all want clean water, clean air, and all that stuff. I, I don't disagree with that. But this whole idea, you, you can, um, you can control things, uh, through, uh, uh, yeah. uh the asset management. I mean, heck, you know, um, uh, we can't we can't uh, build a self driving car. How are we going to control the environment? <laughs> well, you know, the government, <laughs> the government can. Gone? You know, you know <laughs> the so, government can so, do anything, right? They're the answer. They have the solution. Yeah. So I so I, I so I think you know the need uh, the the economy needs people more like you. Um, yeah, look out for yourself. Really invest in yourself, and you know, don't buy stuff you can't afford to impress people you don't like. That, that don't care. Right? Don't care. And they don't know you. <laughs> it's like what a concept. Yeah, I agree with you, sir. Listen, uh, Barry, thank you very much for coming on, and um, I appreciate you. I'm an advocate of you, and you know, he, the <clears throat> man is easily to be found. So, you know, track yeah, him. BarryJamesDyke.com. You know, get on the you can get on the mail list, or uh, and uh, yeah, send a link. We'll send it out to people. And uh, always good to see my friend James. And um, I look forward to it. And please give my best to Ryan and the rest of your family and 
Everyone else. I will. Same here. I appreciate you. Say hi to Mary Ellen. And uh, we'll put MaryJamesDoc.com and your links to your books. And uh, so give people the opportunity to connect with you. All right. Thank you, Barry. Have a great rest of your day, sir. I appreciate you. Thanks, James. Thank you for joining us on the Banking with Life podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and click on that little notification bell. Otherwise, join us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher for weekly content.